Hi everyone, my name is Shahram. Uh, I uh, work under the supervision of Dr. Vikas Prakash. So I spent the whole first year for uh, getting familiar with the equipment, how to use the, uh, the art instrumentation. And uh, I did some experiments that I'm going to talk about that. But firstly, I'm going to talk about the technique that I use for, uh, I'm going to talk about the technique that I use for the all of my experiments, uh, which is called the Treasure Shear Plate Impact Experiment. Uh, it is a technique which is used for studying the dynamic response of material under extreme conditions like high strain rate and high uh, shear. Uh, there is some technique which is called the Split Hopkinson, which is there are some restrictions for that. We cannot reach the high external rate, but for pressure shear, we can go to the, we can get the extremely high external rate uh, of the order of 10 to the 5 or 10 to the 6. And because of that, so we can uh, use this technique to use to investigate the material import, the material deformation phase, the transition and failure mechanism at high external rate. And the, because of the, it's, it's called the, the combined effect of pressure and shear of this technique, we can use this technique for characterization of material in a different application, like material science and engineering, shock physics and astrophysics, high-speed manufacturing, and the aerospace industry, and defense. Here is a schematic of the pressure shear, the pressure shear experiment, which contains the projectile which carries the lawyer plate and impacts the target plate. Uh, so the specimen, which is uh, which is sandwiched in between two high impedance material, we have the whole graphic diffraction purating, which is deposited in the back of the surface of the target, and we can use the, that one for uh, producing the shear, the shear, and the uh, perpendicular velocity direction, and the last one we have the uh, the interferometer system, which consists of two TDI pro and one NDI, and with that technique we can use the PDD or photon Doppler velocimetry to measure the particle velocity in the real surface of the target at the time of impact. Uh, for all of these experiments, the sample preparation is very important for us. So if the, there is some issue with the sample, uh, the, all of the experiment will go wrong. So before conducting any experiment, we use the, uh, it's called the lapping and the polishing to, uh, to make the sample as smooth and uniform that we, we can. And then we check, we check the lattice of the sample using the optical palette that there is a uh, criteria for that, which, which is about two to uh, three Newton rings. And the picture here, figure two, uh, which is the, uh, the palette, which with the high velocity impact the uh, 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 target ring, and then after that, we keep going with the experiment. Uh, there is another concept which is called the T or the distance or time distance. Uh, so here is the this interface is the interface between the flyer and the target. 
So once once impact occur, both the, um, the compression and shear wave uh, are induced at the impact phase. These waves move or propagate uh, toward into the target plate and backward toward the helloid plate. And from here, the compression wave goes. Uh, goes into the some reverberation in order to reach the homogeneous state of interest uh, to reach the homogeneous state of state of difference and then around here reaches to the real um, part of the surface or it's called the TA and the same thing happens for the shear wave so TA is the time that compression wave Arrive at the uh, uh, at the surface, and the time TB is the uh, the time that shear wave arrive at the surface. So after some uh, reverberation and uh, releasing wave, and which comes back, which goes forth and back, then we get to the TB. So the TB, the distance between TB and TB, which is called the window time or observation time, is very important for us, and we are interested to uh, have a, to have that one as clear as we can. So we are not uh, we are not looking for some uh, release wave which comes back from the part here and go interface to this part. So. Because of that, that we have to, for uh, the once we want to pick the the, the thickness of a lawyer and the target, we have to take that one into consideration. So the thickness of the this plate has to be thick enough that we don't get the release wave which interfere in these these two times. Then. We have some equation to calculate the T of A and T of B, which the CAL is the, the compression sound speed and the CS is the shear sound speed. Here I'm going to talk about the uh, interferometer system, how we measure the particle velocity and the three surface. The main component is the uh, laser beam, which is the 15, 15 wavelength. We have two TDI, which is with the screw angle, these two TDI, and which contain the six millimeter focal length. We have an NBI, which contain the, the collimating length, and we have some fiber, which, con which connected to the ETDI and NDI, and we have the TDB machine on photon doppler velocity to measure the particle velocity at the uh, back of the surface. And also, we need the holographic diffraction. Uh, so, this holographic diffraction uh, enabled us to get the particle to get the different uh, angle for the velocity. In this direction, we have a zero. And in these two angular direction, we have the first order diffraction beam. So once the the beam incides, once the beam impedes through the NBI probe to the surface, it gets reflected into the uh, different uh, different angle. One is goes uh, back or reflected back to the NDI, and the other one, two, which goes to the, the TDI one and TDI two, and the signal are peaked with these two. So the interference of these, uh, the first order beams, which is done by the, the heterodyne interferometer, give us the shear component of the velocity, and the Interference of the incident beam and the reflected beam with the NBI give us the uh, perpendicular component of the velocity. 
And the next slide is some uh, equation for, cal for calculating the velocity. V is the, uh, the perpendicular component of the velocity, and U is the shear component of the velocity. So if we add the, these two beams for the two TDI and, uh, and just divided by the sum constant, which is beta, the beta is the angle between the reflection. Uh, and if we uh, subtract these two, we get the shear component of the velocity. Having the, uh, having the velocity of the, of the surface, we can have the shear, we can have the, the compression or the normal stress, and we can get the shear of that power using this equation. From here, we have a row, which is the density, and the VFS, VFS, which is the normal particle velocity, UFS, which is the pre-surface particle velocity in the shear duration. And, and if we want to get the shear strength, having the particle, having the velocity of the projectile in the, in the shear direction and having the uh, component of the shear velocity, we can, and the thickness of the sample, we can get the shear strength. Uh, after you know, like the, those stuff, uh, several experiments uh, were done uh, with two samples. The first one was Hilgard 184, and the second sample was DC745U. We had different uh, projectile velocities and with a different screw angle. So for each of those, the higher velocity means like in the higher stress. And then, but something that we figure out that uh, increasing the normal stress increases the shear stress up to the some point. For example, for this one, we have 1.1 and then reaches to the six, the shear strength increases as well. But after six, from six to the eight, the shear strength reduces, which means that the shear strength is not uh, insensitive to the pressure. The same thing occurs for the, the, the DC 745 sample as well. We have 2.5 and then we got 200. So increasing the shear, we had increasing the stress, we had the raise in the shear strength. And then if we increase the shear, if we increase the, uh, the stress again, we get reduction in the shear strength. Here is the uh, profile of particle velocity <coughs> with the time, with the particle velocity at the impact time with a different angle. And for the DC 745 view, and the right one is the normal stress, which shows is almost 6 GPA, and the shear one, which is almost uh, 450 the maximum. And then we got the shear strength rate, which was about 6.2 for the DC 745. And then the same thing for, for the Hilgard 184. We had a velocity profile with a different angle, and we have the normal stress and the shear, and the shear stress, which was almost 380, and we got the shear strain rate, which was 5.4 times into the 5 per second. 
our conclusion was about that for the old ratio that we have, the strength, the sheer strength of DC7 is greater than Sysgard because this uh, sample was was had some particle in it which was uh, which causes that uh, uh, strength. And then the other conclusion that we got the the flow shear or the strength of both elastomer are sensitive to the pressure, which we, we checked that one, which was 450 megapascal for DC and 380 megapascal for speed. And then the last one was that for the both elastomer, they are not sensitive to the stirring rate at all pressure. And then my future work is going to be working on the sample uh, which is in the which is in the interest of the A or the F. And if there's any question, I take it.